Hi, uh, welcome back. We're doing eight figure eight dash eight for our exercises. Um, right now, we're going to start with this figure right here. Um, we're just going to start with a line. We're going to follow right along with the book. So I'm going to start right there at the top, and I'm going to draw a line that is 2.5 inches long. And then I'm going to come straight down on my screen. Um, if I check this right, it's 1.5 inches. And then I just come back and I attach the endpoint right here. So far, so good. Now, next thing I have to do is I need to make this right here, which is a line. Attach it right on. Go up 0.25 inches, straight over this way, 2.25 inches, and back down to attach to the end. And then finally, we're going to do this one right here that creates this L shape. So it goes up 0.25 inches, goes over to our right 1.25 inches, and then straight up 1.25 inches, over 0.25, and then back down here to D2, as it says in your textbook. So there's our rough start for our shapes. It's, it's got them kind of laid out for us. Now, um, one of the things we need to make sure we do is we need to make sure we put the arc on it. Now, if we look at this, it's actually wedge shaped right here. This surface right here inclines. It goes up like this to a central arc. Now, if we're looking at our piece, um, it really does not give us any good dimensions in the text about where that's supposed to be located. So as I'm looking through the text trying to decide, okay, where the heck is that supposed to be located, uh, which is one of the reasons I want to do this, we're going to use um, a couple of the tools in here. And I'm going to hurry and double check my numbers before I start this and make sure it's going to work right before I show it to you. Hang on just a moment. Okay, we're back. I wanted to make sure this was going to work right. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is use the identify command. And just like we've done in the others, and we're attaching to that corner right here, the upper left-hand corner of the bottom base piece. From there, I'm going to create a circle that is um, at uh, 3 quarters of an inch over, and I think it's 0.5 inches up, if I remember right. So let's see if we get the right spot. And it's supposed to be an eighth of an inch in diameter, um, 0.125. There we go. Okay, so far, so good. From there, I get a series of concentric circles around that. So I get another circle that goes around that one. It is a quarter inch in diameter, and one more around that one that is 0.75 inches in diameter. Whew. Okay, it actually worked right. From here, everything else is just easy. Now, that said, I know I need to create, first off, a line that's going to come off this endpoint and go tangent right here. Now, I don't have my tangent set, so I can either type in tangent or I can shift, right click, select the word tangent, and bring my cursor up. It's automatically going to find that tangent point right there. I can do the same thing on this end because I'm going to come straight up off this, but the quadrant is the tangent. Okay. Now from there, I simply have to do a couple little things. Um, basically, I'm going to make some trimming, and I'm going to trim using this line and this line, this arc, so it gives me my nice curve right there. All right. And then after that, I need I just need to go in and put in some hidden lines and a few other things. Um, this does notch out right there, which I have to include up here and over on this side. Um, so we'll show you how to do those. Now, it sticks out a quarter of an inch from its face right here. So let's start at the top. I'm going to use my offset command. I'm going to go an eighth, uh, fourth of an inch, 0.125, pick this surface right here and come in. That's the same distance as this here if i just gone and use that as my through. Now I'm going to make a line that's going to go off the quadrant, up, and off the quadrant, and up. Do the same thing off the quadrant to the right, perpendicular, off the quadrant to the right to perpendicular, and then I'm going to use my offset again, okay, offset, and I'm going to go 0.125 again because that's how deep this offset is supposed to be, and I'm going to offset that surface and that surface. At this point, I'm ready to trim, and I'm going to use these three lines here and these three lines here. Once that's done, I hit my enter, and I can pick off this, 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 and this. There's that part. I'll do the same thing up top pick off the pieces I don't want to keep around. There he is. Okay, next I just have to put the hidden line in. Now notice I did get this left. I will just flat out erase that. I need, do need to put some hidden lines in, so I'm going to pull this menu down, pick hidden, take a line, come off the quadrant here, and go up, and take a line off the quadrant here, and go up, and then trim that off at that point, and then do the same thing going to my right. I went from the quadrant to perpendicular, okay, and that one's not centered right. We're going to try that again. I think it snapped to the midpoint, perpendicular, not midpoint, Benson, perp. Shift, perpendicular to there. There we go. That's much better. Now if I just trim using this, get rid of these lines, 
Uh, yep, so far so good. Need to put in a couple of uh, countersunk holes. Um, one thing I do want to make sure I put in before I get too far into this is, see this corner right here? That's a plane change. It's got to come down and show up in this view. So I absolutely need to make sure that's there before I get too far ahead of myself or it will cause me some issues later. I should also locate it in this view, okay? Which means if I do it right, that means I have to project over here. Um, and let's just create some projection lines first. Okay, and there's my projection lines. That's my re reflection line. So there's my, there he is. Okay, trim that one off. Yeah, that means all these lines I just made were actually just to find that one line's location without doing a bunch of measurements. Okay, so that's all said and done there. Um, the only things we have left to do is the holes, and they are oriented in this piece. Um, they're, they're, let's double check the dimensions here. They are in um, 1.25, less than 270. Oh, that's the wrong one. No, that's not the one I want. Okay. Um, where are they? I'm looking in my list of instructions here. Uh, 0.25 radius for that and a 0.5 radius for the other portion. All right. So let's go in and do this. I'm going to go ID this corner right here. And I'm going to tell it to create a circle that's at minus 0.5 comma 0 0.5. There it is. Now, that orients, locates the center point of my first one. And I remember I used this corner to locate it down here. So he's located a half inch in and a half inch up to the left from where I started. And I just want to make sure I get the right diameter on him. And then it should be the same going over here. But because of his location, he's going to be really close to that edge. So one way to do it is if I do a circle, whoop, not a line, but it's in a circle, in this center, it goes 0.125. There's the center of it. I should be able to, from the measurements it gives me, mirror right around the midpoint like so and place it just exactly right, which that's all we got to do. Now, to, like I said, to get the finalized portion of this, I have to come off and make it so these show up in the cut view down here. So I'm just going to come off the quadrants to perpendicular of each of those. Whoop, I can't to the middle, undo. Perpendicular, Benson. Right here, perpendicular. Okay, all the way through. Perpendicular. All the way through to perpendicular. There's my holes. Whoop, that one went wrong. Undo that last one. There we go. This is going to be right now. Boink. All the way down here to this perpendicular spot. Now, here's the deal. This is going to come down into my part an eighth of an inch. And then it's going to come across, not like that, undo, across my piece until it lines up with this one. Now, if I fill it with a radius of zero between this line and this line, it trims it off. Then if I trim at this line right here, take off these guys, that's all I should have to do to have my countersunk hole placed correctly. Now if I want to, I can actually cheat on this a little bit. I'm actually going to take these guys out right here. I'm just going to go copy. And I'm going to select these three lines and these other two lines right here. I'm going to copy from that endpoint to that endpoint, and there it is. Now, the last thing I have to do is because it's a half inch in from each edge, I copy. Okay, all this right here. So remove that from this corner because it's a half inch in at this point right here, and everybody should be oriented in the right spots. There, that is my figure 8-8 -8 completed. Let's zoom extends. Oh, come on, light me today. There it is. 8-8 -8 is completed. Thank you for your time. Uh, good luck on this, and it's going to take a little bit of digging. Um, but basically all it is is we have a 2.5 inch long line here, a one and a half inch line here, back to end point. We then came down here and went up a quarter of an inch over this way, 2.5 inches, back down to our or to this line, a quarter of an inch. Then we started here and went up a quarter, over one and a quarter, up one and a quarter, over a quarter, down 
back here to this line, one and a half inches. Then all we did is we offset the back a quarter of an inch. Then we made from right here a circle that was over to our right. So we did ID of this corner right here. We came over 0.75 and up 0.5. Had our circle at an eighth inch radius. Then did a concentric circle of that to a quarter inch radius. Then did a concentric circle of that to three quarters of an inch. And then did a line from this point, tangent, and from this point, tangent, and then trimmed out so we only left with the arc. And then we just simply projected from here to get our rest of our views. Okay, thank you for your time.